Hi everyone, welcome to my Photoshop tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make this uh, 3D globe effect. Now to create this sort of effect right here, we're going to be needing a particular map to be working with. Now if I skip over to the map. Now this is the sort of map we're going to be working with. Now to find this, you can go to Google and type in for on Google Images and search for maps that way. Or you can go to the Photo Exchange website. Go into Google, type in Photo Exchange and you'll find the website I'm talking about. Now this map here, if you cannot find this map, don't worry about it, I'll give you a link to uh, my website where you can download this image. Now for this uh, project right here, you're going to be needing a certain type of Photoshop, it's Photoshop Extended. Now the other sort of Photoshop doesn't have the 3D tools and capabilities, so you're going to be needing that sort of Photoshop first. So. Once you have the map and the Photoshop to be working with, um, if you're new to Photoshop and you don't know how to load images into Photoshop, don't worry about it, you go to File, Open, and then select the image wherever you saved it. Now once it's into Photoshop itself, and if you have a map that is black and white, good, then you don't need to do this step that I'm going to be showing you right now. If it's working on the same image I'm working on right here and you've downloaded it from my website or you have an image from the internet that is color then we're going to be needing to change it to black and white like I said so if we go to control and uh, U to bring up the hue and saturation we're going to bring the saturation all the way down and click OK now it's still grey and white and now we don't need this so we're going to go to control and L to bring up levels now we're going to bring up the black all the way, well most of the way, so not too much detail out of it. So around about there should be fine. Then 156 if you're working on the same image as me, that should be OK, then click OK. Then from here, we're going to go to new layer, you can do this by going to the new layer icon on the bottom right hand side of the screen. And we're going to go to filter going to go to vanishing point then we're going to click on the corners so it's making a box now I'm just going to do this very quickly not going to pay too much attention you can pay a lot more attention than me now if you're working on the same image as me I'm going to turn it down to about 50 um, depending on your image size at the time, if you're not working on the same image as me and you've got a smaller image, you might want to turn it down a bit more, the grid size, which is at the top. Um, but if you have a larger image, you can turn it up just until you, it's something that looks right to you. Now, once you've done that, you want to go to the drop down menu, which is at the top left hand side. And you want to make sure that render grids to Photoshop is checked. So make sure you've done that. Once you've done that, click OK. Now that we've done that, we're going to uh, hide that layer for a second. Now we're going to go to the uh, paintbrush on the left hand side. Make sure we have got the map layer selected. Now make sure you've got black selected also. And we're just going to paint out these little dots right here that we don't exactly need in the uh, shot then change uh, to white color you can do that by clicking the X key on your keyboard which changes from the foreground to the background color so we're just going to color these little dots in now you can keep them if you want them but I don't need them in my project at the moment like that. Now once you've done that we're going to bring the grid layer back. Now we're going to double click the grid layer. Now we're going to go to color overlay. We're going to change the color to white. Click OK. We're going to go to stroke. We're going to change the pixels to 2 if you're working on the same image as me. We're going to change the color to white again. 
Now, depending on your image, like I said, if it's bigger, you want to play around with the pixels, the size of the stroke. Now, I'm going to keep it around two. You might want to go for one or three, depending on the size of your image at the time. Then click OK. Now, once you've done this, you're going to go to File, and we're going to go to Save As. Then you're going to just click Save. I've already saved one already. Click OK and then click OK again, like that. Now from here, we're going to go and hold Control on our keyboard and select both of the layers. Then we're going to go to uh, 3D. We're going to go to New Shape from Layer, and we're going to go to Sphere. Now give that a few seconds to render, and there we go. We've got our layer right here. Now to make it see through, we're going to make a new layer, new blank layer, and we're going to bring that down to the bottom, so you drag that down to the bottom of the layer panel, and now you've got the sphere layer, click that, and you've got the little image right there, you can double click the little uh, box icon and it should bring up the 3D scene uh, options. Now we're going to go to the third one along at the top. Now where it says opacity, we're going to see the little folder right here and we're going to click it and then click load texture. Now you want to select the file that you saved originally, so double click that and let it load. And there you go, it's see-through. So we're just going to close that little dialog box down. I'm going to go back to our background layer, like before, and we're going to colour that. Now you can colour this any sort of colour that you so wish. I'm just going to go for a light red or whatever, and then go to the bucket tool on the left hand side, and there we go. Now we're going to go back to that little 3D um, options by clicking the little image like I said earlier and we're going to go to the first option now you can change the quality to uh, ray trace draft now you can click that and it will retrace it if you've changed any of the options now if we go to the fourth option the lighting option and you want to click the fourth one down on the left hand side light rotate tool like that and we're just going to change the light so you want to light it from the bottom so it's got a nice curved edge right there now once it's done that uh, you're going to go to the first option again and you're going to change the quality to ray trace draft now once you click that it's going to retrace uh, the image it can take quite a while I'm not going to click it because it does take a while sometimes depending on the speed of your computer and at the rate of my CPU it's going to explode because it's not that great so we're just going to click the ray trace draft for you anyway so once that's finished we're just going to close that down and you can change the uh, blending options the layer modes um, you can change them to anything you want you get all different sorts of options different effects stuff like that now I'm just going to keep with normal now that's the tool all done and finished and it looks perfect now don't just keep uh, there you can add loads more lighting effects you can add different colors you can change the color of the globe if you so wanted and so on and so forth so just don't um, keep with uh, what I've just showed you expand on it and you know teach yourself a few other options to do with it so I hope you liked the tutorial and please comment rate and subscribe and please uh, visit my website and all the links are going to be in the description bar like I said and I'll see you next time so bye for now